Hey, so it's funny, sometimes when you want to talk about something or uh, you've already spoken about something, then something else pops up and it triggers an idea or a thought in your mind about a topic or a game or a situation or a set of circumstances. And um, so I was listening to the Advanced After Combat uh, podcast, which is right now I'm at uh, one hour and 47 minutes of it. But they did spend quite a bit of time, Lucas Brooks, who I think is fairly new to Wargaming or has come back to the fold from uh, being a Wargamer. I was talking about the Napoleonic... uh, line of battle what are they called again last battles I just got it up here I forgot library of battles and about how he really liked that combat system and all that sort of good stuff and later this was yesterday I was listening to this uh, podcast uh, later that evening <clears throat> I went uh, out to uh, Great Hall Games to play uh, some games with buddies we're going to try and play a distant plane and that just it didn't happen so we busted out the uh, picture you can see behind there the um, what do you call it Commander Colors Napoleon uh, series and we had the French and the British and the Portuguese and stuff and we played Busaco and we played the uh, large uh, epic rules which I think are custom I think uh, Brady put them all together they're pretty cool and so or maybe he worked with guys on BGG and put them together but anyway they worked fabulous and we had a great time and I was looking at how that game played at the tactical level and, and I would probably call this battle we played, given the size of it, the scope of it, kind of grand tactical would be the right word. And although uh, the guys on the podcast were talking about that uh, the, the, the battle library, library of battles for Napoleon is operational, it's not. It's grand tactical. Not that that matters, right? But it's about a battle, so it's tactical. And whether it's tactical or grand tactical doesn't matter, but it's tactical. And so that's mouse nuts doesn't matter but they were also talking about the combat system and how you know they thought it was really cool I really don't like the combat system for NLB for all sorts of reasons uh, that I've already said and we're not going to go into again however as I looked uh, so I listened to two things one thing there struck my mind and then that made me think about a second thing so two things uh, uh, when they were talking about operational uh that the game was operational it made me think like well you know there's a there's a the approach to battle scenario in most of those games and you know Zucker is apparently big on the fact that hey look you know you uh, really the battles are all the same and whether you're in a square or not in a square or you go around the flank or you do this or you do that none of that really matters it's really how you position your forces on the day of battle and where you fight the battle that drives the result plausible argument can't really argue with it can't say that if I did or didn't have my cannons in the right spot or make a square or didn't make a square that I wouldn't have won because I was in a worse position than perhaps my opponent was. What am I getting at? What I'm getting at is that it's interesting that the the NLB system with the longer scenario that's an extra day or so of gameplay does give you some operational aspects to it, which is kind of interesting. And if that indeed is the purpose of the series as a grand tactical system, that's kind of cool. But it still lets me down on the actual, we actually come to the combat. It's almost like, well, yeah, you know, we built this really cool system. We had all this stuff with command and supply and demoralization and movement and all this other bullshit. But yeah, the, the combat just doesn't matter. It's just, you know, retreat, advance, retreat, advance, whatever. It doesn't matter. So that's fine. We're playing Napoleonics last night with this commanded, uh, commanded colors, Napoleon. And I'm starting to look at the map and starting to uh, look at the way the, how the cards are playing out for us. So we've got these, you know, restricted choices in terms of what we can do and can't do, which is very similar to the initiative system that's going on with uh, NLB. And I'm thinking, man, this is really playing out very well. Both sides, both armies have very different capabilities and, and different features down at that tactical level. And even operationally, there were some differences, right? 
organizationally that were both different armies, uh, the British and the French. So, but we start looking at what was going on with the Portuguese and the French and the British and how they all interacting and the Baker's rifles and the Guard Grenadiers and the light cavalry and all this stuff, right? It all came, it all kind of came together. I was like, huh, this game, this particular game that we're playing is really cool because the battle seesawed backwards and forwards. The British were doing really well until uh, the French started to close. And then as the French closed, uh, they really started to, you know, hack amongst the, uh, the, uh, the British and the Portuguese, just tore them apart, right? So we were down six flags to one. And we came back seven flags all. That's a 13-flag game because it's uh, two boards. We're doing epic. Uh, and we had to pack it up then. But I walked away from it uh, with this, having listened to the podcast, having then gone and played the the uh, Command and Colors system. I was like, okay, Command and Colors is a, is a even better game than I thought it was. I've always liked it, but I struggled with what scale I was going to be playing with and the deadliness of things, where it's a kind of a little too deadly, right? Sometimes, but that's okay. I'd rather be more deadly than less deadly. And then, uh, and then listening to the podcast and, and having this, this word pop up about being operational and then thinking about the approach to battle aspects of the games from uh, Kevin Zucker, it really gave me an appreciation that both systems are fine and I certainly don't mind NLB, but, but I, I walked away going, very cool. I, l- I like what I'm seeing from both systems. They both serve different needs, uh, certainly different in terms of complexity and time to play. And it was, uh, it was just a nice experience. And I don't know why I'm sharing that with you, but I just wanted to encourage perhaps folks that have not played Command and Colors Napoleon, give it a shot and try it out. Because uh, while I don't own two copies of everything like one of my buddies does, my uh, who's he's Brady's deep into this game and loves it, which is awesome because when you play with him, he knows all the rules and it's got it all down square and I can I can roll up and just play, right? And have my little chart in front of me and play. Uh, and NLB, you know, I'm never going to play another NLB title uh, battle again. I will play the day series as long as uh, Kevin Zucker keeps keep making them. But, uh, but I think I have, uh, I've walked away with a, a more nuanced and refined appreciation for the two different systems so that was kind of cool i kind of like that anyway that's all i got for you i just want to share that i enjoyed my my battle my uh, battle of Basako last night and i have uh, uh been enjoying listening to the boys uh from uh, the advanced after combat uh podcast all right catch you later guys